I'm Lucy. And I'm Scott. We're from Book Apps and this is The Week in Books. Hello, welcome to The Week in Books. We're going to head straight in because I haven't got any preamble prepared. Oh, wow, no preamble. I know, I don't have we any do. preamble prepared to what we're talking about this week. Also, because I'm excited because in the last million videos basically I've said maybe I'll read the seven deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle and point one of business today in the week in books is I'm going to read the seven deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle there you go here it is Death I feel left out it's quite a cool little thing I, I actually want to read book. it I want to read it well Scott interesting you should say really? that because guess what we're gonna do what I'm allowed to read it wow do you want to do a buddy read? So... Um, I have to with you. I'd rather just read it. Actually, well, I was going to do it with them. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. But you can do it too if you'd like. So, Gina, who is a regular viewer, hello Gina, um, pointed out to me that I keep saying I'm going to read it. And maybe I'd like to read it with her. And then we thought, do you know what? The more the merrier. We've done a few buddy reads on our channel, haven't we? Yep. Um, we did Homegoing. We did The Bear in the... Nightingale. Yeah, I Bear did another one. Did I do Sing and Buried Sing as well? <gasps> you did Sing and Buried Sing. I go. did The Female of the Species. Yeah. And it's been really fun. Anyway, so we thought, well, let's do it again. So here's the plan, folks. Here's the plan. If you want to read this book, or actually, if you've already read it, we're going to start reading it next Tuesday, the 22nd of January. I know that that's kind of a tight deadline to get your hands on it, but... Then, if we read it in a week, that takes us up to the 29th. And what happens on the 29th, Scott? I can guess. Is it the Costa Prize announced? It is. So, there yeah, you go. the overall there winner of the Costa Prize is announced. So this book is nominated, uh, or was the winner of the best first novel category. And then the winners of all the different categories get like rolled up into an extra and winner have a big prize. Fight and see which yeah, one and wins. then brawl it out. Um, for the ultimate winner. And also, bookaxe.com mm -hmm. said that, remind me? It was the best rated book of last year. That it was the year. best rated book of last year. So we're backing it to win. Anyway, so we're gonna see what all the fuss is about. What we're gonna do, I'm saying this in a really rambly way, I'm gonna put the link below. We're gonna do our buddy read over on bookaxe.com. Gonna aim for about 70 pages-ish a day. And I'll post my comments, my thoughts um, on there. And you can all join in, you can just pile in. Tell me what you think. I'd love it if you would like to join us. Um, the more the merrier, frankly. So yeah, I'll stick a link below. I'm really rambling now. I've made my point, haven't I? Yeah, and I really gonna hope it doesn't suck. Are I'll you gonna read my, it with I've my day, day to analysis, um, analysis said it was the best book, rated book. It if it then sucks, I'm gonna like. I might, I might have to fib if it really sucks. <laughs> I don't think it's gonna suck. I've got high hopes. Are you actually, in all seriousness, are you gonna get your own copy and read it? No, I'm just going to use your copy and we bend out, like dog ear the pages and different Well, I don't ways. care if you do that, but I do care if you stop me reading my 70 pages a day. That would get on my nerves. Because that, between us, we'd have to work we 140 this? pages Let's discuss of this off camera. Okay, sorry. It's not very interesting, <laughs> is it? Um, anyway, a couple of small bits of news. That, folks, is a crow. That's a crow. Um, because Lee Bardugo, author of Six of Crows, right. and Shadow and Bone, her books are officially being made into Netflix series. It was series. only a matter of time, wasn't it? It was only a matter of time. Um, so lots of people very excited about that. Just a small bit of news for, uh, you know, fantasy yeah. fans out there. That, that's a rocket. <laughs> <laughs> that is a rocket. Not just any old rocket. That is the logo for the Hugo Awards. Um, thank you very much to Final Joe Blow for coming to us with this exciting bit of bookish news. If you have exciting bookish news, it share makes it, in the it makes our job a lot easier. <laughs> yeah, I like it if you share it. With I me. say our job, <laughs> Lucy's job. <laughs> um, I love it if you share it with me. Please share. Um, so the Hugo Award nominations are now open. So Hugo Awards, best in sci-fi and fantasy. I like this award though because anyone can nominate a book. Okay. Obviously, there's criteria, but um, anyone who is a member of... Oh, oh right, hold so on. So I can't nominate a book. Well, you can. The World Sci-Fi Convention, Worldcon, anyone who is a member of that can nominate something for the Hugos, mm -hmm. and anyone can become a member of that. I mean, you have to pay, 
Okay. But not an enormous amount, I don't think. Um, but then you get you get a say, so I like it because it's a nice democratic yeah. prize. Um, I'm going to put links to everything I'm talking about. That's cool. Down below. I would so say I, 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 I would say I'd go on and um, nominate Skyward, but I'm fairly sure it's probably going to be gonna nominated nominate for me. Yeah, I think yeah. it's probably not worth the membership fee. I think you're. <laughs> <laughs> in your vote will already have been cast. Um, so there you go. Oh, this book's in the way of my notes. Oh! Throwing books on the floor. Putting it gently. There has been an app launched. The most horrifying book app ever to be launched ever. Blinklist, it's called. Does anybody out there use Blinklist? If so, could you please tell me what I'm missing about this? Because it seems to me um, to be completely missing the point of books whatsoever. So, Blinklist has taken the two and a half thousand most bestest selling famous non-fiction books mm -hmm. and condense them down into 15 minute reads for you. So you don't have to read them, you can ah! just get bullet points. I can see the point of non for non-fiction. It's just like, honestly, quite a few non-fiction books, if you read like the first two pages, not the first, the first couple of chapters. First two, last two. It's like having to take summaries and stuff. It's the same. It's like all the major points and the highlights from a non-fiction... A lot of non-fiction books are padding. A lot of non-fiction books are padding. We're going to have to agree to disagree on this one. Well, maybe... Maybe if it was Disagree fiction. away. Disagree. I don't know. Think of fiction, yeah. You're kind of <laughs> just going to have... Just I, I don't even know if it's possible. Book. But All the nuance of the arguments, which is... I can't see how it's possibly not lost. Sorry, Blink List. Um, well, Scott, Scott might sign up, and he, you know, he likes non-fiction, so... Maybe, I, I don't think it sounds as stupid as you think. Maybe you should try it. <gasps> maybe you should try it. Maybe you should actually try it. Maybe if I say it, like, three times, you might actually do it. Oh, my goodness. Right. So, so I'm doing a buddy read, and you're signing me up to all this stuff before this video. Yeah, next week, Scott will be reading The Seven Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle with you, as well as an awful lot of non-fiction books in 15-minute chunks. <laughs> I would like you... To test this, Scott, I'm gonna. Uh, th we'll take this. Uh, we'll take this off camera as well. I've just finished Silk Road. Uh... If they manage to condense that into a 15 minute read, I'd be super interested to see how they've done it. That is true. That was a very long book. Yes. So yeah. We'll see. I'll have a look if it's on there. <laughs> we'll see, and then we can see if it actually summarised it correctly as well, because that would be an interesting. That'd point. be <gasps> to read you one. Need... <gasps> you need. Oh, this is evolving. You need to test Blinklist on some non-fiction books that you've I've read, already read. Yeah. and see whether they've got it right. It's a plan. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, in better news, Scott, this is where we're moving to. I'm not sure I should, I probably should have broken this to you. Christmas tree? We're moving here. <laughs> we're moving here, folks. Yeah. I've decided. We're moving to Norway. Oh, um, really? Yeah. <laughs> okay. um, so if you could nice just organise that you know, for me. Yeah. Um, can sell, yeah. <laughs> sell up and, and we might that. be able to buy a... Um, a box. Yeah. And also, I recently read Dark Pines, yeah. um, review coming later in the week, uh, by Will Dean, and actually that has kind of taken the edge off this dream a little bit, because, oh, terrifying, it was Sweden, but you know, the concept of pine forests. It's all um, Scandinavian. Scandinavian yeah, pine forests. Anyway, do you want to know why we're moving to Norway? Because they have a book town, well, a book village. They have a tiny little village, cool somewhere book. between a fjord and a, and a glacier. Yeah. Called Mundel, I believe. Pronunciation, who knows? Mundel. Um, only 280 people live in Mundel. Yeah. So I imagine it's very peaceful. Guess how many books they've got there, Scott? 100,000. Ah, uh -huh. 150,000. 150,000 books. Could you quickly work out how many books per person that is? I don't know. You can do that while I keep talking. Um, oh, no. They have an awful lot of bookshops there. Yeah. And they also have all sorts of like little bookish bookcases yeah. along the road, all around this town, stretching for two and a half miles worth it's of book bookcases. It's about 500 bookcases. books each, yeah. 500 books per person in Booktown. Is that, is that, that many? How many, how many? how many books are in a library? Don't ruin it for me. Okay. I don't know. A lot. More than 500. Yeah, okay, but well, you... Scott's just smashed my, scratched my utopian dream. <laughs> I want to move to Mandel. You'll probably get to read a lot in Scandinavia at this time of year, because you probably would not do much. Because it would be cold and snowy. Mm -hmm. Beautiful, but maybe quite dark. It's, to be honest, it's quite dark in the UK at the moment. Um, shall I move on? Yep. Now that you've ruined that for me. Only 500 books, that is not nearly enough, folks. That's not nearly enough. Right. 
last point of business for the day. Now this actually was something that I found before Christmas and I wanted to talk about before Christmas and Scott was like, that is not festive. You are not allowed to talk about that. It's not festive. And then I forgot and now we're back again. So, um, and I can't remember what Helen it was, so. Morris, is it Helen Morris? Heather Morris, sorry Heather. Heather Morris wrote The Tattooist of Auschwitz. You okay. see, not yep. festive. Um, which was one of the world's biggest selling books last year. I think it sold like 400,000 copies in the UK alone and a bajillion others elsewhere. Very nice. Now, it is um, basically a love story set in Auschwitz. Now, Heather said that this book was 95% absolute <laughs> truth. Okay. I think I'm going to find the exact quote. How she far said. off was the 5% that wasn't truth? Well, she said that the 5% related to putting the, the people in situations that didn't necessarily exist. It mm -hmm. didn't relate to the context. Okay. And, and she was told this love story by um, the tattooist, um, yep. on, his, on his deathbed and she merely put it all into words um, Convenient. and um, she said every reasonable attempt has been made to verify facts it looks like a rude word I've written there but it is definitely facts um, and uh, the Auschwitz Memorial Research Centre have come out and gone Heather a lot of this could not possibly have happened <laughs> it just could not possibly have happened um, you know, penicillin wasn't there. Um, the transportation. That, that mobile they took, phone they get out and. <laughs> I don't. Yeah. Well, not quite that much, but the transportation that they took. This is a serious point. <laughs> I'm, I'm getting to a serious point, folks, that I actually want to know your opinion on and your opinion on. So, the transportation they took to get there, not true. The logistics of actually them having a relationship in the camp or in that way just was not possibly true. There was loads of stuff. Um, you know, the general reality. Oh, the specific like acts of rebellion. Mm -hmm. There's one bit where they hide like gunpowder under their fingernails. Auschwitz has just said, you know, these things could not possibly have happened. So, does it matter? It's okay? fiction. Is it the, 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 the... <sighs> if you went into anywhere, the bookstore or library, you'd find it on the fiction shelves. And they'll probably yes, say at the would. beginning, this is a work of fiction as well. But no, she said it's 95% fact. And I've done everything possible. Where to does she say that in the book? Yes, apparently. I mean, I don't have a copy of the book, but apparently that is in the. But is it caveated notes. before it saying this book is a work of fiction? And no, then... it's it's sold as a true story. Yeah, well. And the reason it's a problem, Auschwitz says, and I kind of agree with, is because actually people who don't have a lot of knowledge mm -hmm. about it, about Auschwitz, yeah, or yeah. That, that's fair. are coming into it, and they're going to replace what could potentially be you know, accurate knowledge with these inaccuracies. So they don't have enough um, information to distinguish between what is fact and what is fiction. And that is a problem. Okay, so I guess I'm asking how much should fiction tell the truth? My opinion, I asked you a question, I'm just going to tell you my opinion. My opinion is that it's about managing expectations, isn't it? And if you say that something is kind of all true, then you should make it all true. Yeah, but... But then you'd have to carry out pretty much every single historical fiction book that has ever been written. They're all lied to a certain extent. There's all going to be a like fake news in every single one, I imagine. Because they're not just... non-fiction. And even non-fiction, there must be a, a reasonable amount of interpretation and stuff like that. Well, yes. Interestingly, actually, that kind of rolls into, because I am reading this week, In Order to Live, by Year and Me Park. I'm just going to hijack this a little That's bit. That's fine. And actually, this is a memoir of a young woman's escape from North Korea with mm -hmm. her family and it's really fascinating and it's really harrowing and um, she escaped when she was 13 and I've since read a lot of discussion around um, the accuracy of it <laughs> not that she's out and out lied but that you know should we be taking the gospel word on North Korea from a oh, uh, from someone who left when they were a child you know, mm -hmm. because memories can be distorted and, you know, she's going to she's gonna have been told through all her period of teenage years, wasn't North Korea terrible? And, you know, has that helped to, you know, push the narrative onto her um, a little bit as well? Not saying North Korea is not terrible, but you know what I mean? So, yeah. I think it's about managing expectations, isn't it? 
Oh, but, but, but yeah, yes, but you're picking a fight with the whole world of media. Every single media is the difference between the news. a you true can... story and based on a true Come story. Come on, you can go to one newspaper and the headline on the same the same event will be completely different to the headline in a different paper. Well, yes. So it's no different. As usual, Scott just shuts down the argument with the definitive word. Um, if you guys have any more nuance to your thoughts around whether you should. Fact or fiction? Where's the line? Where's the line? Share it in the comments, you know? Yeah. See, come on, can somebody please argue back a point that just, you know... Shuts me up, it's fine. So I like that. So I've already told you what I'm reading this week. Yeah. Reading this one. Um, thanks, Mum. It was a Christmas present. Um, what are you reading? Um, everything like... Oh. Is it fact or fiction? <laughs> well, allegedly fact. <laughs> but it's called Everybody Lies by... Seth Stephen Davidsvich. Um and it's really good so far. So he keeps going to me. Oh, I really like this book. Not quite that high pitched. So but, so hmm. so there's actually a lot of different random facts in here, but it's it's around big data. But in particular, it focuses a lot on Google searches and sort of what you can learn from them and how how human beings would quite often lie to surveys and in other, other sorts of research, but actually they probably tell most of their d deepest, darkest, intimate thoughts to the Google search bar. We never lie to Google. Um, so, so there's all sorts of facts you, you can determine from that. So this, this book is a journey through those, some of those interesting facts. Is so. it scary? I, when, when you actually read it, the, there was some stuff around um, racism in the US and how actually it's not so much scary it's in intriguing and insightful about how perceptions normally is there's a like a north south divide whereas actually this book showed that there was like an east west divide which is different and Ooh. it actually directly correlated with the states that ended up voting for Trump um, and stuff like that so, so, it's, it's so actually it's, it's usurping Commonly conventional held. wisdom yeah, yeah on a whole load of assumptions Ooh, a whole load of things so it has it, it actually been really 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 good read i look forward to the full so. review of that not scott's sofa review of look at this graph <laughs> 20 minutes yeah, it's all right um that's there it that is the end of the week in books we i feel like we did that quite concisely for once maybe not maybe, maybe not, not. <laughs> when you look at it it's gonna be like oh, no didn't manage it um but yeah there you go it doesn't mean we have to sit here and ramble now. But so, um... If you've got any great bookish news, please share it in the comments. If you're reading something fabulous, share it in the comments. If you're reading something rubbish, share it in the comments. Just so that we don't or make Or stop the reading the book. <laughs> of reading it too. Also stop reading it. Yeah, life's too short. But, you know, tell us that we don't waste our time too. Yeah. Um, that's it. Check out bookaxe.com and the app's completely free. Subscribe to our channel if you're here for the very first time. And we'll see you soon. Thanks. Bye. Bye.